After World War II, uh, there was a migration of Hispanics from northern New Mexico and Colorado to come and work in the mines and the railroads. And so my dad followed his brother here to Salt Lake City and uh, we settled on the west side. I was three years old and uh, he left the family and uh, my mom was left to raise four kids by herself. And so I grew up on the west side. He grew up with a single parent mother. She worked very, very hard and she had high expectations of her children, that they would work, that they would study, that they would complete their education. The interest in the law uh, began when I was on the streets when I was a little boy. I used to shine shoes and sell papers and I used to see lawyers uh, downtown Salt Lake. And I didn't know what they were. My brother told me they were lawyers and I didn't know what a lawyer was. But I liked the way they dressed. Uh, they dressed real sharp and of course they carried themselves as though they owned the place. And so I always admired lawyers. Uh, they were lousy tippers, but they were, you know, very, very prominent in the little world I was living in. And he would also see drug dealers and pimps who were also dressed very well. And uh, at a young age, he began to discern the difference between the, between the two. When I was a boy, I was taken off the streets by a man who owned a print shop about a block and a half away from my corner. And, uh, he took me into his print shop and gave me a job so I could get off the streets uh, from selling papers. As a businessman and as a printer, he taught Andy how to work. Andy learned to read newspapers every day, so he became educated and uh, um, was very informed at a very young age. But he also expanded my world by teaching me how to play tennis and taking me from the west side to the east side. There needs to be an outlet where that competitive drive comes out. And I think tennis was really that for him and it channeled his competitive drive. And in doing that, what happens with kids like Andy, that you learn that if you channel that competitive drive positively within a structured system where there are rules, that you can succeed. Andy began to see a different part of life from where he grew up. He began to see that these people are successful because they're educated. When I went to the country clubs, I met real lawyers and uh, I talked to him about, you know, what does a lawyer do and how do you become a lawyer? And he took me to the University of Utah and he said, this is where you go to school. If you want to become a doctor, if you want to become a lawyer, if you want to become a teacher, if you want to succeed in life, this is where you need to end up. He didn't have much direction at that point in his life, and the University of Utah had outreach workers to come into the community and recruit ethnic minority students. And he was fortunate enough to be one of those students. We're talking about an era where there were not a lot of so-called minority lawyers. Uh, and he was a star. You could see the star quality in him because of the commitment that he had. I deal with uh, so many kids that are in crisis and families that are in crisis. And we problem solve every day. And uh, we make a difference. He expects people to understand that coming into the court isn't the last resort. That coming into the court is the beginning of a process where you can become a better person. And he does not suffer fools gladly. I appreciate that. We protect children. Uh, we get children some services. We get children help. We try to uh, fix parents, you know, that have lived in dysfunction for generations. Uh, it's, it's the best job in the world. He is a classic American success story because America it still provides the American dream for each and every person. This is a great country, but it's only a great country insofar as we can say, there's Andy Valdez, a kid that really didn't have a lot, and he was able to take what he did have and build on it and become the man that he is, and we should all be proud of him. He has children who come back and say, I was in your court, and if it, and if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have made it or he has parents approach him and say, you saved my child's life. Really, you saved their life. He's a genuine guy. You see, what you see is what you get. He wears his heart on his sleeve. In a world of spin and where we're always doing the politically correct thing to the nth degree, to the absurdist degree, we've got a guy who wears his heart on his sleeve tells you where he's coming from, and you know that. I appreciate that. I think that the, uh, there's an old phrase, 
and this is an important phrase to me, and that is, are you or are you not a stand-up guy? He's a stand-up guy. I don't think there's higher praise than that. Thank you very much for this award. I, I feel very appreciative, but also very humble to receive this award. I know uh, past recipients have, have accomplished so much in their lives, and to receive this award is something that I never expected, but uh, again, I just uh, appreciate uh, the recognition, and uh, the University of Utah has certainly given me more than I've given back to this great school. Thank you.